Hi guys, Bruce here, and welcome to another Server Factory video. It is very important to us that we maintain our reputation of supplying quality server systems. In order to do this, we have to verify that the systems we integrate and supply work as intended, and that all components are compatible. Today we will be showing you our server testing process, going through all the steps we take and why. All of the systems we supply must go through our testing process before being cleared for shipping. We do this to make sure that we don't supply our customers with faulty components. Many of our systems are used for mission critical business applications, so it is very important that they are reliable. Once all of the components for a system have been installed and all internal cables have been organized, the first step is to connect power and turn it on. For redundant systems with more than one power supply, we make sure that all power supplies are connected during the testing and verify that they all work by looking at the LED indicator on the unit. Green means all good. While the system powers on for the first time and initializes, we take this opportunity to make sure that all internal fans are spinning and not being blocked by cables. Once we're happy, we boot the system's BIOS. For Supermicro motherboards, as soon as we're in the BIOS, we can see the BIOS version of the motherboard as well as the total system memory. The first order of business here is to make sure that the BIOS version is up to date with the latest release from Supermicro. We can do this by just checking the motherboard's product page on the Supermicro website. If the BIOS needs updating, we will do it now. But if not, we make sure that the correct amount of RAM is being detected and verify that it's actually what the customer ordered. Once the BIOS version and the memory are verified, we make sure that the CPU or CPUs in the system are correctly displayed in the BIOS. Now, if the system boots up in the first place, then the processor probably works. But for dual socket systems, it's important to make sure that both CPUs are being detected. We can check this easily by selecting CPU configuration in BIOS, which will show us the CPUs installed in the system. If there are any drives installed in the system, we can make sure that they are being detected in BIOS as well by checking the system's SATA configuration. If the customer has their drives connected via an external HBA or RAID controller, the drives will not appear in the BIOS. In this case, we have to boot to the storage adapter to make sure that the drives are being detected. In the case of NVMe drives, these may not be visible in BIOS depending on the motherboard. If not, we will boot to an operating system such as Ubuntu and verify that the drives are being detected in the OS's disk utility. We can also use Ubuntu to make sure that any add-on cards such as network adapters are being detected, which we usually do by terminal commands. Next up is making sure that the system's IPMI firmware is up to date so that our customers can remotely manage their hardware as smoothly as possible. We check the IPMI firmware version in the BIOS in the IPMI tab and make sure that it's up to date with the version shown on the Supermicro motherboard page. If the firmware needs updating, we can do this remotely by connecting to the server's BMC IP and uploading the update file. Finally, once all components have been verified and updated, we start the final stage of testing which is using our Supermicro Diagnostics tool. This tool does a quick test of all aspects of a Supermicro system, like a LAN connection, CPU frequency, power supply health, and more. Before we run the test, we have to make sure that all I.O. ports such as LAN, IPMI, and USB are all connected, so that they can all be tested. The Diagnostics tool will take a couple of minutes to run, and once it's done, it will list any components that failed. Otherwise, it will say that the system has passed, which means that testing is complete. We will give the system one more quick check to make sure that the cabling is clean, and not blocking any fans and that the system is in the best condition. If the system passed all of our tests, then the system can be prepared for shipping to our customer. This is only our standard testing process due to customers often needing their systems or systems in a very short period of time. If there is any specific test that you would like to see us do, then feel free to leave a comment down below. If you'd like to see more videos about our systems and our process behind building them, then please subscribe. Thank you for watching.